As technology advances, prosthetic limbs are getting more sophisticated and more lifelike. Bionic hands are advancing to the point that they can do many of the same tasks as a human hand. But how do today's state-of-the-art prosthetics change the relationship between humans and technology? Are they just a useful tool, or could they be considered a human enhancement? Motor technology is getting better and better all the time. The big step forward is going to be improving that link with the body and also have feedback. Someone's got to pick it up and not have the cognitive load of thinking. It's just got to become second nature. I just consider myself a normal person that's lucky enough to have a bionic hand. Nikki Ashwell was born without her right hand and became the first woman in Britain to use an advanced prosthetic that's designed to be as lifelike as possible. The hand is myoelectric, which means it's controlled by contracting muscles in the arm to move the bionic fingers into different grips. Nikki's always viewed herself as a one-handed person, so I'm interested to find out if this new prosthetic has changed the way she sees herself or her relationship with technology. So you were born without a hand, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was born without my right hand and we don't really know why, it's just the way I came out. And I've, I've found ways in life to adapt so that I, I feel like, although I don't do everything in a way that other people would expect me to, I find my own way. And you've had a few different prosthetics before. What was your first reaction when you heard about this new bionic hand? Um, I was a bit skeptical, to be honest. I'm very well adapted to doing everything in my life with just one hand, so, the idea that, I, that there could be a technology out there that was good enough to make me change my ways and actually do things with two hands was not that convincing. Since I've got it though, I have been won over. It's got these different grip patterns that mean I can do things that I couldn't actually do before. How long did it take to get used to it? It took a while, um, not because of the operating action, that was really easy, but what took a while was overcoming that hurdle of relearning everything. Because I've spent so much of my life doing things with one hand or having my little adapted ways of doing things, I had to make sure I had the patience to do things differently. How does this bionic hand compare to some of your previous prosthetics? These are ones I had as a child. How uh, old were you with that one? That is tiny. I think I had that at six months old. But the idea was that I tried having two hands so that I could, the doctors could see whether I would take to it or not. And compared to these more kind of lifelike skin texture arms, it does look very robotic. I didn't choose how it looks, but I'm actually far happier for it to look like this than to, for it to try and imitate a real hand in its appearance. Because I'm not trying to fool anyone. I'm not trying to say, actually, I have two hands. It's more upfront. There's no hiding. The hand Nikki uses is called the B-Bionic Small. It's made by a company called Steeper in Leeds, which claims it uses technology from Formula One and Swiss watchmaking to make the hand as functional as possible. I wanted to find out how the mechanics inside Nikki's hand worked and what predictions the engineers at Steeper had for the future of prosthetics. So tell us about the B-Bionic. How does this differ from other prosthetics? Well, traditionally, if you get a myoelectric hand, it's just generally an open and close, whereas you get incredibly high grip force in a small area. So things like a wine glass or a piece of fruit is quite difficult to control. Whereas this has got five digits that all drive in independently. So it can wrap around and give a really compliant grip. The other thing that the hands are doing that makes it look very natural is each of the fingers are tracking the other. So if one's going too slow, every 50 milliseconds, they check where each are and adjust to get a perfect grip. The tripod grip, which is the thumb and the two fingers coming together, that's quite difficult to do. And it's taken a few generations of hands to get it absolutely perfect. 
What do you imagine the prosthetic hand in five years' time or ten years' time would look like? So I think 10 to 15, maybe growing them back, you know. <laughs> I think there's going to be, you can see real advances in that, those sort of building organic systems over printed structures. So there's like ear structures and things already being made. Uh, hand is very, very complex, but you know, in that time frame, I imagine we might be more biologically integrated than we are now. I wanted to try one of the myoelectric hands for myself. By strapping a couple of electrodes to my arm, I could control it by flexing and relaxing my muscles. These are just electrodes. Just electrodes, and what they do is pick up the electrical impulses from the surface of your skin when you move your muscles. And I'm going to plug you in to the hand. Mm -hmm. So if you just move your hand forward for me. Wow! There we go. And move your hand backwards again. So that's uh, one grip you've got there, which is uh, what we call key grip for holding a, a key card or something. So if you close the hand again, you could see you could hold a, a, a key or a, a credit card or something in, in that grip there. I thought it would take a while to get used to, but I seem to be able to do it straight away. Can you imagine this ever being better than a human hand or having different functions? Well, it could do. We could have lots of different functions. Make like a Swiss army knife and have um, uh, all sorts of tools and gadgets and gizmos and stuff hidden in, hidden in the fingers. But the question is, should we do that? Uh, should we make something that is, that is better than a human hand? While the hand's very advanced, it's clear we still have a way to go until technology catches up with evolution. But it's not hard to imagine the prosthetics of the future offering functionality beyond the human body. At an event in London, Nikki joined a panel to discuss the future of prosthetics and whether a hand like hers could be considered a human enhancement. Do you feel enhanced? No. I feel different. This is me with my robot hand on, and then sometimes I'm me without it on. I mean, compared to the guy I was when I lost my arm, I'm not enhanced, I'm not a cyborg. If you say, are you disabled? And I, I would say, no, I'm differently able. And, you know, I am, I'm differently able. <laughs> Nigel uses an older version of the bee bionic hand. Unlike Nicky, he was born with two hands, but lost one in an accident. Overall, what has it meant to you having this hand? The void started to be filled. A psychiatrist said to me one time, just before I got this, where do you see yourself in a year or so? Sitting in a field somewhere, out in my car with a hose pipe attached to the exhaust. That's all I could see. So it is for you, it's, it's making up for something you felt you lost. It's given me a life when I didn't think I'd have one. For Nigel, the hand has dramatically changed his life. But Nikki is keen not to become too dependent on the technology. Do you still consider yourself a one-handed person or is this like your own hand now? I do still consider myself a one-handed person because that's what I was for nearly 30 years. Um, however, I appreciate that I now also consider this as part of me. Somebody that I kind of just met started touching the hand, touching the fingers, and I got that reaction of, what are you doing? Why are you touching me? Um, and I think that says to me that I've accepted it as part of my body. Have you seen the arms that are kind of brain controlled and that kind of thing? Has that ever appealed to you? Um, I've, yeah, I've seen them, heard about them. I think anything that's got some sort of permanent wiring doesn't really appeal to me. I find this one easy enough to control as it is. I don't really need to control it with my mind. I'm already going, you know what? Open hand, easy. I, I don't need any more integration into my body than that. Having a bionic hand has changed how Nikki does things. But what's most interesting is how it's changed her sense of self. To her, the hand is more than a gadget, but it's not part of her body. As possibilities for human enhancement advance, 
The main challenge may not be the technology, but how we relate to it and how it changes our perspective on what it is to be human. <laughs>